Falterbach's Baby by Turbo V6, the three liter beast that powers the GLC 43. Yes, this car is now assembled in India. It was a huge headline from Mercedes Benz India. It's the first time that we're getting AMGs also now being built right here. So that's what makes this car really special. It is, of course, the facelifted version of a car that we had earlier. And today you get your first glimpse of the first Made in India AMG. Welcome to CNB. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Thank you for joining me. And like I said, right through the show, you get a chance to get your first look at this car. But let's get on with our business at hand. And it's a bunch of other SUVs, much smaller, less powerful, but still quite exciting. I am talking about uh, the two cousins, the T-Rock from Volkswagen and the Karok from Škoda. Now, lots being said about how they are very similar, but I'm here to tell you how they are different. It was last year when I first told you about the Volkswagen Group's SUV offensive for India, which was to be led by Škoda Auto India. Collectively, the VW Group brands Škoda, Volkswagen and Audi plan to launch at least 10 new SUVs in India within a two-year period. And a bunch of them have already arrived. The Tiguan Allspace from Volkswagen, the Audi Q2 and these two. Two very important models that went on sale in India this year are the Škoda Karok and the Volkswagen T-Roc. So you know how you had the Rapid and the Vento? They were pretty much the same car, with just a few things changed around to make them two different models. It's not the same story here with the T-Roc and the Karok. These cars are, yes, built on the same platform. Yes, they share the same drivetrain, but there is a whole lot that still separates them. So while they're related, they're certainly not identical. And so today, this isn't a shootout. It's more about explaining to you how they are different. Both SUVs are based on the versatile MQB platform and both come to India as completely built units or CBU models. Yet they are priced reasonably competitively given that. Visually, both SUVs are miles apart from each other. The T-Roc is compact and gets a crossoverish design. It's very stylish and urban. The Karok is bigger and borrows its styling from Škoda's flagship SUV, the Kodiak, which gives it the more conventional SUV proportion and stance. The Karok is longer by 148 mm, wider by 22 mm and taller by 51 mm. Its wheelbase is also longer by 48 mm, which ultimately translates to more cabin space. But I'll get to that in a bit. Both come with excellent paint finishes and build quality and both also have LED headlights, LED daytime running lights or DRLs, LED tail lights and chrome exterior detail which highlights their premium appeal. The car oak looks more muscular and as I have said has the SUV presence. While the T-Roc with its two-tone roof makes for more individual style and flair. Both cars get 17-inch dual-tone alloy wheels. Now let's get them on the road. Here as well, the two could not be more different. You just got to love the driving position and the steering on this car. It is very nice to drive and the ride quality is sublime. It is really, really comfortable. 
get a commanding view of the road and what's more, a very typical SUV feel. Yes, when you're in the driver's seat, or even in any of the other seats for that matter, you really know that you are in an SUV and I think uh, the Karok's big USP, especially when you compare it to its alter ego, is that. The Karok is also very sporty and energetic in its feel. The only downside that comes from having the bigger, slightly heavier car is that the claimed mileage number is much lower than on the t rock Both SUVs are powered by the same 1.5-litre TSI turbocharged petrol engine, which is tuned to make about 148 brake horsepower and 250 Nm of peak torque. Both also come mated to a 7-speed DSG automatic transmission as standard. The engine likes to be revved hard and peak power is achieved somewhere around 6000 rpm, while torque kicks in from as low as 1500 rpm going all the way to 3000. That gives you good low and mid-range performance. So here too, it's quite obvious that the whole focus is on comfort. You really have great ride quality. It's uh, a very smooth and refined experience, the way the gearbox and the engine perform as well, but the big difference is how the car feels. You really feel like you're driving a car, a sedan or a hatch, not so much an SUV, and I think that's a huge difference in characteristic. It's something that a lot of people who are accustomed to driving smaller, compact cars or even sedans will actually appreciate about the T-Roc, and uh, it's a good thing in a way that it has such a different character then to the Karok. So yes, the T-Roc feels sportier, while the Karok has the commanding SUV feel on the road. And some of that gets enhanced by the way the cabin feels in each of them too. So yeah, you'll get a true sense of the difference between the two SUVs once you'll step inside their respective cabins. The larger proportions of the Karok are apparent in its very spacious cabin. It feels airier as well because of its larger windows and the panoramic sunroof that extends all the way up to the rear seats. The dash is minimalistic and the equipment feels well configured to match the big SUV feel. The space inside the T-Roc is certainly more constrained by comparison. The seating angles are pretty much similar but the Karo gets more premium upholstery along with better bolstered seats. Both get adjustable headrests and three-point seat belts for all five passengers. The functionality and other in-car operations are similar in both cars. However, you might like the pictorial color display on the Karok a bit more compared to the slightly more conventional infotainment system on the T-Roc. Similarly, the layout of the instrument cluster is more dynamic, but the T-Roc does get a variety of wider or less detailed displays in its virtual cluster. In terms of safety features, the Karok gets 9 airbags while the T-Roc gets only 6, and while both offer rear parking camera, neither of them come with dynamic guidelines. The T-Roc, however, also comes with hot keys for SOS and roadside assistance, the Karo gets an electrically adjustable driver seat and fatigue alert. The Skoda Karo is about 5 lakh rupees more expensive than the Volkswagen T-Roc and that is not a small amount. However, the Karo is bigger, it offers more cabin space and more premium creature comforts. So while the Karo does make a strong case for itself, Skoda could have been a bit more aggressive on the pricing given the fact that this is the only compact SUV in its portfolio right now and the competition is tough. So if you want a bigger feeling premium SUV with most of the latest bells and whistles and a powerful turbo petrol engine then the Karo is worth considering. However, if you do not mind missing out on a few creature comforts and are looking for a premium SUV with a car like driving ease and a lot of style and at around the 20 lakh price point the T-Roc would be a wiser choice. Yeah. 
almost 400 horses and 520 Nm of peak torque. And this car can do 0 to 100 in just 4.9 seconds. The performance is something you'll have to wait for because you'll have my whole review once the embargo lifts on the show next week. But uh, the first look video is up on YouTube. So that's something you can go and check out. While we take a very short break, we come back with plenty more. Keep watching. Welcome back to CNB. It's now time to understand the strategy at Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India. There is a brand new bike, Your Highness, which has arrived. But it's more than just that. It's also about the bigger bikes with Big Wing and everything else that's happened through the pandemic and then the strategy that's unfolded for the future coming out of the pandemic. That and more is what I discussed with Atsushi Ogata, who is the new president at HMSI. I am coming to you uh, not just virtually to you, but also not virtually to my guests. I mean, the whole point is that so far we've been socially distanced to the point where we've been in two different locations. So it's the first time that I am very happy to welcome onto the show uh, a guest who's joining me physically. But of course, we continue to maintain the social distance. Ogata-san, it's wonderful to have you. Ah, namaste. Namaste. And yeah. uh, I must uh, tell you all that uh, Atsushi Ogata is the President, CEO and MD at Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India Limited. And uh, yeah. sir, you are, you are relatively new to India, so yeah. especially warm welcome to you. Yeah, thank you. I'm very happy to come here. Anyway, no, it's, yeah. it's great to have you. And yeah. uh, I will start by, you know, firstly asking mm -hmm. you the, uh, the, uh, sort of a cliched question. Ever since you've arrived, uh -huh. uh, right in the thick of the pandemic, the situation is known to everybody. It's a difficult situation. Yeah. Um, what's your personal experience been like since you first got here? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, since I was appointed, assigned as president of uh, Honda Motorcycle India, the first of May. But unfortunately, I could came to India at the beginning of July, and actually still just uh, two or three months to operate it of the company. But of course, not only for Honda, but all of OEM makers are suffering this kind of uh, pandemic situation. So, but fortunately, uh, the Indian gov government direction is very clear. So no more uh, uh, whole India lockdown. So step by step unlock down. So step by step back to normal. The fortunately, uh, also our the BJ situation is getting better since uh, since uh, after the lockdown, the end of March. The month by month is getting better. Now almost the same uh, uh, business operation as last year. The hopefully uh, what the, uh, the most exciting festival season uh, from this weekend. I uh, hopefully also the what the Diwali season. So should come to more exciting demand from market. I hope so. You have to talk us, take us sort of a little bit back in, in time. And uh, you know the whole idea of developing such a product uh, for India especially. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the what were the key reasons behind bringing this to to market? Yeah, of course. So already, uh, our competitors already established such kind of actual demand in India in the past several years, and uh, of course, the our main product is a commuting commuting model, the AT scooter, Activa or CB Shine or CD mm -hmm. Dream. Yes. So big demand in the India. So basically, it's quite uh, busy to. Uh, to match uh, the our production capacity to the into the actual market demand uh, since our company established 20 years ago, so year by year increase rapidly. So therefore, very difficult to think about other things. But uh, last three years, uh, three years uh, ago, so total market demand is somehow is uh, the the speed of growth is slow down. Then the, such kind of a customer group uh, demand is increasing rapidly. So why not we should consider to enter the, our new product in India exclusively. Bas basically, we had experience uh, the mid-class CC, 250cc produced in India in the yeah. past. But basically, this kind of model is coming from another global, global factory inside of India. So very less localization. So therefore very difficult to match the customer's uh, demand. But this model is the first time only they think about the Indian exclusive customers. 
So we should concentrate to think about of development concept only for the, the main focus on the India. So therefore, it is the uh, very natural thinking the based on the Honda motorcycle long his history among the world. Right. The firstly commuting, then the step by step, the big bigger CC, then finally this kind of flagship model. So you have heard about how this is the very first AMG to be assembled here in India. The part you perhaps don't know is that that engine is also being assembled here. Yes, all the parts and components come in from a Falterbach, but then the engine is being put together here, so that makes it a little bit more special. Pricing for this Made in India version will be announced next week when the car launches, and so that and all the driving details coming up. But the only other time you typically have the hood of the car open when you're getting it serviced. And now that can happen at your doorstep. A lot of brands are offering this, but the big daddy has jumped into this now as well. Indian Oil, IOC, is now bringing you this service in uh, partnership with a Delhi-based company. Here are the details. Country's largest fuel retailer, Indian Oil Corporation, is now diversifying into a new arena, car servicing. But this is not your regular workshop servicing, instead it's an at-home or doorstep service. This is courtesy a tie-up with home mechanic and existing doorstep service player in the national capital region. Dubbed Home Mechanic IND, the workshop on wheels offering will allow consumers to book servicing for their vehicles from home and a three-member service team conducts a complete service of the car on-site. The first such service prepared van is stationed at the company owned fuel outlet at Delhi's Panchil Enclave. Once a booking is accepted, the van leaves for the location chosen by the customer to service the car. And according to the company, a car is serviced in less than 2 hours as opposed to an entire day spent at the workshop. And all this without worrying about the exposure to COVID-19. What's more, the routine servicing packages also include things like fog sanitizing and waterless car washing. What's also interesting is that the company claims that the customers will spend just 50% of the money as compared to a conventional workshop. Over the next six months, Indian Oil wants home mechanic to prepare 50 such vehicles that can be stationed across company pumps in the entire national capital region. That will only mean that you, the consumer, will get this service at your home faster and in a much better way. The long-term plan is to also get into more cities and have a pan-India footprint, with Mumbai becoming the second city to get the service. I will be driving this car as I have been promising right through the show. I hope you like the first look of the locally built AMG GLC 43 Coupe. So please react to that, react to everything else you've seen on the show and uh, I will leave you with this as I say goodbye. Just the promise of a much bigger room to follow. With that, please wear your seatbelts, please stay safe, bye-bye.